Okay. We're going to get rolling here. And I have announcements. And the reason I'm stumbling around up here is because uh, our Annie had a baby girl. Oh. Oh. And uh, her name is, because I know you all want to know a name. Her name is Gemma Geneva Kaimi Smith. Kai, like in Kairos, God's time and not mortal time. Me means honey in Mandarin. So we get a cultural education here too. <laughs> she was born prematurely, so she's still in the hospital. She's doing a CPAP and some other things. She's going to be fine. She's just, you know, a little early. So they're, they're taking care of that. But I knew you'd all want to know about that. So now you all know. Um, if I hear more, I will keep you posted. This week, we will have our evening service on Thursday. And I'm changing days off and on because I want to see how many people are going to show up for which day. And uh, what it's looking like right now is that Wednesday is going to be the best day, but that's not always going to be good for everyone. That's why I decided I would change off on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Do you all understand why I'm doing that? I figured you do. Mostly just because I want to see who's, who wants to come. And we, what we did this last Wednesday was we studied the readings for today instead of studying the readings for the previous Sunday. That seems to make more sense to folks. Makes more sense to me. Also, I'm just disturbed by the deaths of children. You know, if anything should warn us about what's coming with society, the fact that we're killing off our children in this way is not one that we can ignore. We have to do something. We can't just sit around anymore and wait for people to stop being mentally ill. That's what we're doing. I think, and I'm not going to preach today. I'll preach next Sunday. It's both going to preach today. But I wanted to bring it up so that you could be mindful and be in prayer and uh, about all these poor folks. It's just too much to absorb. It's just too much. Um, so let's, let's be praying that God takes care of that. I don't have any other announcements. Does anybody else? Pardon me? Pride Mass is Saturday's Friday. Okay. Pride Thank Mass you. Friday at St. James. That's a diocesan event. Okay. Um, and then the Mass for the Memorial Mass for, for Bishop Sanders is on Saturday. I'll send out announcements that will give everybody the time that. of those. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I can't think of uh, anything else, so we'll go ahead and get rolling. <laughs>
Please stand. Grace be with peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us sing together hymn number 450, verses 1 through 3 and 6. <laughs>
you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless. Send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Acts. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi of Macedonia, a Roman colony. And we, go, we were going to the place of prayer. We met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to ad adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a thorough flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison with the doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read Psalm 97 responsively by verse. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees it and is afraid. 
The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all people will see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Thine are the years and his life, and the cities of the Jews rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Most High, Lord, Most High over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who take evil. He preserves the lives of the saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, the righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from the book of Revelation. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now let us stand and sing together hymn number 605. <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with you, with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me, loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. <laughs> God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
always nice for Beth and I to be with you all here at St. Luke's. I always enjoy coming and looking out on a lot of familiar faces, but also looking out, I think, in the best stained glass windows we have around and look out into the world. I mean, it's just a wonderful view. And to look up there and see the sky is always a nice surprise to me. I had an experience recently when Beth and I were in Texas this past weekend for a wedding that I'd like to share with you. However, at the same time, it's impossible to ignore the horrific events that have been occurring around us lately. And you a Texas and Buffalo, New York. Evil in the world comes in many different forms, some much worse than others. Whether it happens to us or to others, evil can elicit very strong feelings in all of us. Feelings of merely annoyance or great anger, hopelessness or despair, maybe even a desire to lash out at others. But regardless of our feelings, we are compelled as followers of Christ to act differently. Our feelings, whatever they are, are often valid and appropriate. What we do with those feelings, however, is an entirely different thing. We are always called to act in love, no matter what. Two weeks ago, we heard Jesus tell the disciples and us, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If we believe Jesus, if we seek to follow Jesus, then we may feel a certain way, but we are called to act in love. So what does that mean? Well, I think Paul and Silas today give us a wonderful example. I would imagine since they are human, like us, they are prone to some of the same feelings that we might have and weaknesses, that they might be angry about being thrown into jail. Maybe they even hoped for the chance to escape. And then it came. <laughs> but instead of fleeing, they stayed because they realized that if they left, their guard would kill himself. They may have felt like fleeing, but they stayed and they acted out of love. What a great witness to us. Now, we will most likely not land in jail for casting out demons or for acting on our faith in other ways. But we will at times be called to act in love, even when we may not feel like it. Now, that brings me to the story I spoke about earlier. As I said last week, we were in Texas for a wonderful wedding for some friends of ours' daughter. The morning of the wedding, I decided to go out and find a good breakfast taco. Because as we all know, we don't have good breakfast tacos in Knoxville. <laughs> and since we lived in Texas for 16 years, I developed a strong like for those things. <laughs> so anyway, it was hot and muggy, and apparently there was a great little breakfast stand around the corner. So I thought it was closed. So I thought, oh gosh, I gotta keep walking. So I kept walking, and about another five, six, seven, eight blocks, there was supposedly another taco stand. Well, as I was walking that way, as I said, it was hot and muggy, and I came across this interesting looking place, which was a vegan coffee shop. I've been telling the story to a few people this week, and, and some of the reactions were like, well, that should have been a good indication to you to keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I like vegan food, I like all kinds of food. So I decided that I would stop in there and give it a try. There was outside seating, and there was inside seating. I went inside where it was nice and air conditioning and I sat down at a table and the place was moderately full. Um, I realized quickly though that I was the only white person in the establishment, which didn't bother me. I mean, I'm, I, that doesn't ever bother me. Everybody I've met is usually quite nice. As I sat down and waited, there were several staff members up milling around the counter. And one of the waitresses, who was obviously waiting on the inside tables, kept walking past my table. And she did not look at me. She did not stop and talk to me. She kept going and talking to the other people that were coming in. So I sat there and I thought, well, surely she's not ignoring me. I mean, I've only been here, you know, once. I can't have offended her that badly. Uh, it usually takes me at least twice to offend people. <laughs> so I sat and waited and waited. and. Another woman came in, sat down, she waited on her, and as she left, she went, walked past me to the counter. 
and another young lady was there who was waiting on the outside tables. They had some sort of exchange, very brief, and then the woman who was waiting on all the outside tables came over very nice and pleasantly and asked me what I'd like to have for breakfast. Couldn't have been nicer through the whole experience. Well, I sat there as I waited on my, it was a, uh, uh, not bagels and lox, bagels and carrots, which was really interesting. It was actually very good. Anyway, so as I was waiting there for my food, I couldn't help but get annoyed. I thought, you know, why is this child ignoring me? I was tempted to say something I didn't. My annoyance really actually, if I'm honest, grew into a little bit of anger. I was like, why am I being ignored by this woman? But I thought, well, this other woman couldn't have been nicer. So I sat there, and I, I sat there longer. I suddenly began to think about this and say, you know, uh, I was experiencing a little bit of what a lot of other people experience all the time. Mm -hmm. Many of you have undoubtedly experienced discrimination because of what you look like. I know that I am an old, white, privileged male. I know that, that's the way I've been raised. That sort of, I guess, enlightenment for me was revelatory though. I had never really experienced that, uh, I think in a way that, that really penetrated. Now, I don't pretend to understand what it means to be discriminated against. I'm not gonna say that. But what I am gonna say is, I think for me, it was an opportunity to just have a small glimpse into this. And it really sort of changed my attitude towards this waitress. Instead of being annoyed and angry and resentful, I thought, well, undoubtedly, she's experienced the same thing. Now, why she, whatever experience she had, she felt like she couldn't deal with me is, is my assumption. But I thought more and more about it and thought, you know, look, try to look at this as a learning experience and not act in anger or resentment, but instead try to act in love. Now, I'm not saying I did that totally successfully, but I am saying that at least that entered into my mind, and I thought a lot about that when I read about today, and I've been reading about the other scripture readings that we've had uh, in the past couple of weeks, about how we are called to act in love. Now, we can have our feelings, as I said, but we are called to act in love. And so that gave me a lot to think about. How do I respond as a Christian? And how do we profess to embrace God's commandment to love at all times? Will others know that I am a Christian? Will others know that we are Christians by our love? That's one reason why I've chosen to have us sing at the end of our service today that song. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, as Jesus tells us. That's our witness to the world, that in spite of all the horrific events that are going on around us, that's what we're called to do, to continue to act towards one another and to others out of love. We're unified through our love of God and our love of Jesus Christ and our love for one another and others. As we hear from Jesus today, the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I and them, and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have looked and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Love is a feeling, but love is much more than that. Love, true love, is an action that we take. And love is most definitely an action that we take when we may not feel like it. So what do we do with the anger and the sadness and the horror we may feel in life of all the hatred and the killing that's going on all around us? We act. We find ways to act in love towards all of those around us. We show others we love them even when we don't feel like it. We act in prayer for those who are devastated by loss of life violence and grief that encompasses all, encompasses all of us. We act by challenging those in power to do things differently. But we always act in love, not in anger. Evil comes in many different forms and it often leaves us feeling helpless or angry or sad. The difficult truth is that there is often not a whole lot that we can do. 
In turn, many of those times, our energies are focused on how we are feeling. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing if we try and understand those feelings and maybe use those feelings to understand things in a different way. And then not to act in anger or resentment, but rather to find ways to act in love. Too often, anger leads to more anger, and not only in us, but in others, who in turn retaliate. To be clear, though, I'm not saying that everything is as simple as just love. But what I am saying is we have to remember, most of all, what Jesus said to us. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We are called to witness every chance we get, no matter what, to that love. And that may not sound like much, but it's often the best we can do. And if we embrace our faith and try every day to follow our Lord and Savior, sometimes it's a lot more than we might think. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Now let us stand and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of your purpose. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and the Father, God and God, light and light. True God and true God, be God in my name, for one meeting with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became departed from the Virgin Mary, and was made again. For our sake, he was crucified and promised to He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on page 388, form 4. <coughs> Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done, we have not loved you in our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. If we may die in your will and walk in your way, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving prayer A found on page 361 of your prayer books. This day we offer forth this Eucharist in memory of those who have been killed recently in violence for all those across the world who suffer from violence and oppression. Please stand as you can. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank 
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you in the gladness and singleness of the heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing together. We are one in the Spirit.
Thank you, Candace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.